All right, welcome back. We'll get through the other important definition from Du Bois' Souls of Black Folk, and that is double consciousness. And it's the idea of a person from a non-dominant group being able to see themselves in two very different and diversive ways, or digressive ways. One is that a person who is in the non-dominant group, um, whether it be by race, or by social class, or gender, or orientation, they, they cannot help to think of themselves through that bigoted and stereotyped and prejudicial perspective of that oppressive social dominant group. Now, if we don't want to say oppressive dominant social group again and again and again and again, we could say hegemony. Now, that's a word that gets used a lot in social-based social uh, literary criticism, and it just means the dominant social group. It's H-E-G-E-M-O-N-Y, hegemony. Fun to say. Now, that second part of double consciousness is that a person who is part of that non-dominant group also sees themselves as different, but not necessarily inferior to that dominant social group. In other words, uh, that person, let's say, if, um, they're an African-American in post-Civil War America might say, hey, look, I know that there are people in this other dominant group, white people, et cetera, non-black people, who have these messed up perspectives of what it means to be black. I see myself getting that filter put on me. But at the same time, look, I know that even though I'm different on some levels, in some ways these levels are, you know, at a very large human scope, insignificant, you know, color of skin, gender, orientation, etc. Even though I have this difference, it doesn't mean that I am inferior, you know, um, at my core from this dominant group. So uh, there's this rough kind of split of consciousness um, that's going on according to Du Bois in this definition and can create this sense of uh, neurosis uh, in how people regard themselves. That leads us to something very important. We've got a quiz coming up in about a week and a half and some of the terms we've been talking about recently will be on that quiz. We're, we're looking at 100 points total that's 10% of the class, and it's going to start off with four definitions that, that uh, deal with what we've been talking about so far. That first one will be literary regionalism. I talked a little bit about that before. It's literature that discusses and expresses regional culture, values, and speech. You know, And in, in speech, we're talking about diction or word choice and also pronunciation. Um, Sarah Orne Jewett, uh, Kate Chopin are two really fantastic uh, examples of literary regionalism. I mean, they've got, sometimes people call it local color or local flavor. Um, we'll see something more of that when we look at Abraham, Abraham Kahan's The Imported Bridegroom. Next coming up, satire. Lots of different definitions out there. Keep it tight to this one. It's the use of irony, sarcasm, ridicule, or something very similar to that in exposing, denouncing, or deriding vice or folly. And by vice or folly, I, might, I mean here some uh, very uh, unpleasant, and, unpleasant and unideal aspect of human behavior. If we go back to the, the classic seven vices, you know, greed, lust, apathy, anger, um, I'm missing a few here, but you get the idea. Sloth, did I say sloth? Anyway, and folly is just another word for foolishness. You know, not really thinking things through. We have some excellent examples of satire already in Mark Twain, uh, in the War Prayer, and Letters from the Earth. Third and fourth are going to be our definitions from W.E.B. Du Bois, double consciousness, and also the color line. Now, you don't have to get these definitions word for word, right? But you do need to have the ideas in there. If you've got those in there, you'll get the 32 points. Second part is going to be a quotation commentary. 
I'm going to give you seven excerpts. You get to choose five of them. This is five. Right? It's hard. It's a mirror image I'm looking at of myself. Um, to comment on. First part of that commentary is that you're going to identify the literary movement of the piece. That could be something like, say, satire for Twain or post-Civil War fiction with Ambrose Bierce. Um, you could say regionalism for Kate Chopin or Sarah Orne Jewett. You could say uh, post-Civil War African-American literature or African-American thought for somebody like, say, Du Bois or Washington. I'm trying to slide these literary movement terms into every lesson that I give here just so that people have an idea of how we can group these writers together to talk about their structural features, but also their thematic uh, content as well. And we will see intersections as well. Often you can put um, more than one literary movement onto a particular piece of literature. And if you've got any questions about that, throw them into the inbox, uh, put them out on Remind. I'll be happy to give you my opinion on them. Come visit me at Advice Hours too. That second part is going to be you providing commentary on that excerpt or that passage I gave you. And I'm going to ask you in five to seven sentences to talk about the literary significance, the cultural significance, the historical significance, and or the political significance of that excerpt. I want you to use at least one literary term per sentence. Just go with your basic group of literary terms here. Plot, character, setting, theme, climax, resolution, uh, metaphor, uh, simile, personification, uh, hyperbole, like totes, you know, I could go on and on, um, much to the annoyance of my family. Um, that just helps make sure you've got a certain sharpness to those sentences. Now, I don't have a tiny little list of boxes I'm checking off when people write their commentaries for me. There will be lots of different ways to get to these points. So uh, my whole goal is that you engage with your, your critical thinking and the notes that you've taken and also your ability to look at a reading passage to find five large points of significance. Like I said, lots of different ways to get to the points. Um, and if there are any questions, please, please, please let me know. Um, I'll be happy to explain it in greater detail for you. That ends this lecture. Uh, I will be setting up another one very soon. I'll be talking about literary criticism.